We're so pleased that everybody is here tonight for a pre-concert conversation for the Smetana Trio. Uh, my name is David Plyler with the Music Division, and it's a great pleasure to be speaking with you this evening uh, before your concert. Um, it's, it's a very uh, fascinating concert, I think really well programmed, and I think that that's, that kind of goes with a lot of your, the way that you program your CDs and other um, concerts in general. And so I thought what we could do is maybe just dive in and speak a little bit about the music and about what uh, attracted you to this particular program. Um, so I think the first thing, first question is, um, Rachmaninoff has two uh, elegiac trios. Um, what, uh, what drew you to the first one? Or wh how long has this been in your repertoire? How long have you been playing this? Is it on? Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, I think uh, uh, after a big romantic music we recorded, we played, then we just uh, looked after another possibilities to, to play the mu music after romantic time. So um, the CD we recorded, uh, uh, I think, three years ago, uh, it is CD with post post-romantic music, Rachmaninoff, Arensky, and uh, Zemlinsky, yes. So th this is a kind of music, uh, very expressive, but still very romantic. And um, I love uh, this, we, we call it uh, small Rachmaninoff because it's only 15 minutes long piece, but very, very young, very fresh. Uh, he wrote it uh, at the conservatory. He was very young. And um, it's, uh, I think, the Rachmaninoff is already done. He is already Rachmaninoff, really, <laughs> like, like we know him. But still, it's very fresh. So we, we, we are very happy to play it. Well, I mean, you mentioned why the first one, why not the second. I mean, it's... This one is very suitable because of the length. <laughs> not that it would, you know, it's not more beautiful or less beautiful. It allows you to have different, of course, things in the program as well. So, and, and for the first half to start with, it's a great piece. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, it, it, one thing just to impress upon everybody who may not know the piece well is that he really was, I think, 18 or so yes, when he very wrote young, yeah. this piece. And he actually, it was written a few months before the, um, the Opus 3 piece, the piano pieces, so the famous C-sharp minor uh, prelude that people might know. Um, I just want to put in one quick plug. We have a Rachmaninoff archive at the Library of mm. Congress. Mm. We have a great deal of his uh, holographic manuscripts that were composed after 1916. <laughs> so. Uh, most, most of his music was composed before then, unfortunately, but... Uh, Just great. <laughs> but he did do some revisions back mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the early 1940s, and so uh, we have one of those uh, manuscripts of a two-piano version of the C-sharp minor prelude mm -hmm. on display that people can check out. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, the, um, the, another interesting thing about these trios is that he wrote the, the second trio back-to-back. -back. It was about a year later that he wrote it, mm -hmm. and that was... Um, upon the death of Tchaikovsky. Hmm. So Tchaikovsky was still alive when he wrote this, uh, this first trio, and it's, it's kind of an amazing thing to just, we always think of him as a 20th century figure, at least I do, enough, but um, it's really kind of a, a beautiful connection to the, to the 19th century. It, it is interesting because as, as Itka said, you can already hear, you can hear his language, you know, and, and the, I always say when we start this trio, it reminds me so much of the Isle of Death. You know, the, the beginning is there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. Which comes much later, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah. He studied by Arensky, and Arensky was really so influenced by, by Tchaikovsky, so the, the connection is there so clear. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. No, no, yeah. It's, I, I think it's a wonderful choice to open the program. And of course, it has a connection with that elegiac quality, mm -hmm. with the, especially with the. Um, uh, the Smetana at the end, um, but maybe we can uh, speak a bit more now about in G the, minor as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured you, you did it on purpose. The G yes, C G, yeah. yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, as the uh, kind of the center of the program is the Martinu third piano trio, which is a little bit of a um, not a misnomer, but he has 
three other pieces for Piano Trio, and you've recorded all of them. Um, what, how do you feel about this work in comparison with other uh, pieces that you've played by Martin Um This is, I think, the, 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 if you can say, the heaviest trio, the biggest uh, out of the three he did, uh, apart from the pieces, you know, the Bergerets and... and, and um, uh, so, of course, the, the language is a bit um, denser and, and uh, heavier uh, at some point, uh, but at the same time, it's still typical Martino, you know, with, with, with the, 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 the harmonies, the rhythms, and uh, we, as Czech <laughs> people, Czechs, music, Czech musicians, we enjoy, enjoy that very much, and... Uh, because it, it, it's very interesting, uh, and Martino could do that somehow as well as Dvořák. It's not there is something you you can't really put your finger on it, but something which makes it very Czech, uh, and it somehow warms up your heart when you <laughs> when you hear it or when you play it. So that's very interesting. It's very cosmopolitan music. I mean, it's jazzy sometimes. It's, it's, you and know, impressionistic. The rhythms, so. And very, impressionistic very, as well. The, the, the French influence is there. Yeah. Yeah. But some of the harmonic changes, uh, they are you know, very typical for Czech music. Of course, they, they all come from the, from the folk music, you know, which, which the, the, the region is very rich for. So, I mean, that is uh, the, the basic uh, language. But... And the, the second movements uh, by Martino always uh, are very nostalgic. He, he, you, you, can, you can feel how, how he uh, felt about the Czechia, about homeland, uh, because he, he lived uh, in France, then in America, and then he could not uh, come back uh, after the Second War. So uh, you can feel really uh, the sadness that the nostalgia. That's right. Mm. At that time, it was illness or something that was keeping him, I think, yes, from, from yes, being able to come yes, and turn. Yes, yes, Right. And so he was... Um, this is the last of the piano trios that he wrote. Of course, he wrote a lot of other chamber music, um, which we're thankful for <laughs> that he did. Um, but the... Um, as you said, he spent... Uh, two of the pieces were written while he was in France, I think up until 1939. And then you had these, these two pieces, the second... Uh, uh, trio and the third trio written also a year apart, just like mm -hmm. Rachmaninoff in a sense. And there's a similar distance between the pieces in terms of just them being completely different types of pieces. But one of the things that I'm um, excited to hear live, because I've never had a chance to hear this piece live just in recording, so I'm very excited about it, um, is that there's, and for those of you who may not know the piece, there's an element of um, approachability to uh, to the music all all the time, even when it's um, even when it's a little bit thorny. Like there's mm. a certain element of um, it's yeah. it's kind of you, you feel like you're, you're you're being taken along, and a, and it's and part of it has to do with very clever writing that mm. he does in terms of um, the way he handles uh, harmony and things like that, and and major minor shifts and things across all the movements in a very compelling way. So. Mm. I'd, I'm very excited about it. And do you do you perform this work often, or is this is, is this like a stable repertoire piece for you? This is stable repertory uh, as uh, other Martinus as well, because we love Martinu and we recorded all of the, of the trios. So so we combine very much Martinu with uh, other Czech music, and of course um, this is very interesting that. Uh, Oh, sorry about about the second Jan. He's he doesn't speak, but he he is very shy because of his English. So sorry about that. But but I have to 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 tell you that uh, what is interesting. His father, a very famous pianist and Czech composer, Josef Paleniček, uh, Jan's father was a, a really big friend of Martinu. They, they studied together in France in the 30s uh, by Roussel, Albert Roussel, yeah. and uh, 
uh, his father studied also by uh, Alfred Corto. So it, it is really great time to, to uh, be in France at that, in the 30s of 20th century. And, and um, it, it was really a, a mecca of, of musicians at that time. So, and um, of course, um, they, they, they were friends, and of course, Jan as a next generation could uh, take um, uh, the, the direct uh, influence of, 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 of this friendship. So it's, it's great, yeah. <laughs> Jestli můžeš jenom přeložit, že, že vlastně máme strašně blízko k Martinu právě protože otec se s ním znal a tu interpretaci, ale že vlastně je dost autentická díky tomu, že otec vlastně s ním byl v osobním kontaktu, hmm. čili ten výklad té partitury máme vlastně velice autentické. Bohuslav Martinu, um, and uh, what was interesting that they met many times uh, in, uh, in um, uh, different countries uh, over the world uh, af after the after the Second War and during the war as well. So uh, it is it is very interesting that uh, we can have really this authentic uh, connection. It is it is. Uh, <coughs> I mean, I'm, I'm happy that Martinou now is being played more and more because uh, and that his time is, is coming still, I think. Yeah. And he was misunderstood uh, for a long time, uh, also in Czech Republic, because his music was looked at as uh, merely rhythmical, just... just uh, Mindless rhythms, you know, just just uh, sharp without any depth or anything like that. But um, it's not really the case. I mean, the, the, there is. I mean, it's a deep music. It's it's uh, as you said before. I mean, the you know the way the way, the way he works <coughs> with the harmonies and with the rhythms. You know, they're, absolutely. Yeah, they're very jazzy. Uh, they are very exciting, and uh, I mean, he he wrote. Um, to the Czech Rhapsody he wrote here in America for, for, for Chrysler, who actually never played it. You know, he didn't like it. And <laughs> so, so that is, you know, just the example why you know, people didn't understand him. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that um, it's quite a popular piece. And, and yeah. when we, <clears throat> I don't know if it's how we play, but when we play, the piece is always, you know, quite uh, successful and, or, or well uh, received. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess one other thing I would just say for people to maybe listen for is that um, throughout the course of the piece, there are certain things that um, kind of come back that you don't have to necessarily be listening for motives or harmonic things, but there are things like just rotating piano, uh, written out tremolandi that are, um, you know, that, that are, they're, they're sonic signposts that tell you that something similar or reflective or nostalgic mm. or something else is going to be happening mm. that you can follow along with whether you've heard the piece or not for the first time and I just I just find that um, it's just extremely well written and really uh, well executed so I'm, I'm looking forward to it and uh, this is fantastic uh, fascinating about your connections Jan to Martinu but um, yeah that's amazing um, then so that was the, the second or the third piano trio, I think, is 1951. I think that's the year when that was composed. And then uh, we go back to 1855 um, for Smetana's um, piano trio, um, which is uh, you know a namesake work for you. So you, I'm sure you play it all the time. <laughs> but not all the time. Oh really? No, oh. Really not, no. Oh wow. I mean, it seems like such a. Um, uh, it, it's the the piano writing in particular seems like it's very um, demanding. How do you feel about about the 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 piano part in particular? I just I looked at it as thinking that um, he must have been a pretty uh, uh, impressive pianist. 
He was yeah. very impressive pianist. He wrote uh, really uh, so many pieces for piano, and they are not known. And uh, I'm very sad about that because his music is fantastic. And uh, for me, uh, if if you if you see a romantic uh, composers uh, Chopin list, uh, Brahms, uh, Schumann, Chop uh, then you have to say. Smetana as well, because he wrote really so many great uh, music nobody knows. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, of course, uh, maybe it is uh, because of, of his technique, it's really very, very difficult. Uh, all pieces are very difficult. Uh, right. And uh, he has a special uh, technique. Uh, it's uh, it's um, very, very complicated to, 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 to play a little bit polyphonic uh, uh, and uh, this polyphony is very complicated but it's not so important for, for the effect of the piece. Uh, you, you have to hear the melody, you have to hear the, 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 the interesting harmonies but uh, it must be like nothing this uh, te right. technique problems between yeah so so uh, but i love it because i i, I recorded all all uh, smetana uh, piano solo pieces oh, so that. so so uh, it's uh, it's uh, more than 10 hours of music so <laughs> <laughs> trio is in between <laughs> right right well that's i mean it, it, and uh, the, when i look at this piece and when i hear this piece I often think of it, I think there are certain types of chamber music where um, it feels like the, everybody's working as a unit, as making one instrument. And this is one of those pieces where I feel that you have to be so tuned into each other to be able to, um, to make everything fit together that it's like a meta instrument or some type of um, larger instrument that, that you're all contributing to. And I know that you can say that about a lot of pieces, but um, for some reason this one in particular does that because of those challenges I think Technically, and just the way, so um, that's always it's always I think something um, you know f fun to witness and also um, compelling about the writing because it, it's so um, so beautifully done and so um, interestingly done and it, w maybe we can just say a little bit about the piece itself. It, it starts off with this violin solo, and um, uh, uh, it's got this sort of a rhapsodic feel to it. Um, and then, but then we hear this, this motive uh, kind of over and over again in a sort of imitative way and things like that, but then everything kind of comes together and we have this um, romantic wave. And I, and I do think at this time, um, Smetana was working on uh, his relationship with Liszt and uh, developing that friendship. And I think he even aspired to, he wanted to be a, a Liszt in technique and, and things like that. But um, the work as a whole also has this elegiac Quality to it, and I'm wondering if you might want, want to say something about. Um, uh, yes, uh, of course, because of the content and the circumstances, he 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 wrote the trio and the, when his daughter died, so it, it reflects throughout the whole piece. Uh, and there are there are obviously um, the, the tragic moments uh, and uh, very sad, but. Uh, also desperate, you know, in, in the feeling. And But uh, we were just talking about it recently, whether uh, it's, whether the whole thing is really desperately sad or is it nostalgic? You know, there is a bit of, bit of sentiment in it, especially in the second movement, yeah. you know, when he remembers the, the, the playful time with his daughter, and, and, and of course mixed with the tragic um, thoughts about and the, the death. Cello solos. Uh, yes, and and uh, um, and uh, also how the interpretation changed throughout the years, you know, from from when he wrote it uh, until today. Uh, of course, it's uh, due to uh, change of the instrument as well from the gut strings to which they still used at that time. Um, so uh, we were talking how effective 
it can be today for to, you know in that language for for today's crowd you know it's 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 very it's very interesting because i remember when uh, norrington was in prague uh, i don't know it was 10 years ago 15 years ago with uh, with uh, from you know the my country uh, cycle you know the famous symphonic poems and um, he played it with uh, with the group of musicians in the way it was written with the, with the period instruments, uh, everything like that. And it was very, very badly received. <laughs> it was very badly received. And I mean, uh, the, 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 the dumpies were different, the, the, the phrasing was different. Uh, I think it was too soon in Prague, basically. If he came today, 15 years later, it would have been very, very different. You know, now the, the Dvořák symphonies recorded which were a little bit later, not much later. I mean, you know, we're talking about 20, 30 years later. But <clears throat> in the way, uh, which, I mean, they're, they're researching it from his letters, from the from from uh, people, what, what they wrote about it, about the phrasing, about tempis. And the tempis are, are really something, I think that's the, 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 the most variable from today. You know, when people are used to, you know, one tempo in the movement. I mean, before it was it was so um, from wall to wall, really. <laughs> and I think Smetana also, uh, you know, has something like that. Um, <clears throat> so it is very difficult to cho to choose how you perform it, because uh, and of course. Uh, we don't know today because for us it's two in the morning. <laughs> we arrived yesterday, so it will be probably very nostalgic. <laughs> so. Well, there, I mean, there's some things that are um, just speaking of the the tempi. I mean, there are things that are sort of where you have to walk a tightrope with, um, like, at the end of the first movement with the cello rondo that just kind of mm -hmm. keeps going. It just says, yeah. I think it just says, keep it, <laughs> keep accelerating, keep yeah. being faster and faster. And that's where you have to be kind of locked in together. And I, that struck, I, I imagine that that's the kind of frantic um, uh, thing that, that's kind of a, it's a bit scary in chamber music, especially at that time. It would have been something I think very, um, uh, you know, th that would have been uh, in fun to, well, not necessarily fun, but a, a, an experience to behold, I'm sure, at the time. Um, yeah, I mean, this this piece is just really something, and it doesn't really let up. I mean, it doesn't really have a, um, there's slow sections, but most things are pretty fast, and especially that last movement, I'm, <laughs> I'm already, you know, I'm feeling for you, for that, but, but it's just, a, it's such an amazing uh, piece, so I'm really thankful that you're doing that as part of the program. Um, and I wonder um, if maybe um, you had mentioned uh, some recent projects that included your recording of Zemlinski, Arensky, and those, this Rachmaninoff um, trio that's on there. Um, are there any other um, recent projects or upcoming projects that you'd like to tell us about, um, either in recordings or types of programming that you're interested in doing? Our last recording is a Beethoven recording because we celebrated uh, his 20, 20 year uh, in pandemic time. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, we celebrated um, through the CD recording and uh, so uh, we recorded two series um, uh, with the most important probably mm -hmm. trios uh, he wrote uh, it's it's a, it's a fantastic music and we are very happy to to to, to do it and um, we have the cd's here if you are, if if you are interested after the concert we we just thought about it that we can just show you the CDs, sign the CDs for you, and and oh, and, 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 and and we can sail or or how how, how you how you like <laughs> to see it. Um, so uh, this is uh, our really recent project. And I don't think you should say how you like because you, we have to sell it. <laughs> one because once I, I we played, I played uh, many many years ago, in 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 um, I think it was in Syria uh, before many, many years before the war. And um, someone, I think the ambassador mentioned also, you know, that there are some CDs 
for you for after the concert. And people took it that, you know, that they can come and just take the CDs and go. So, <laughs> so, so soon there were no CDs. <laughs> so, so since then, you know, <laughs> to say... <laughs> Precise. Okay, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, and um, we are uh, just now uh, waiting the, the year uh, 2024 because this is a Czech music year. Yeah. Many of composers are born or died with four in the end, and uh, Smetana um, would be <laughs> 200 years old in uh, 24, and he died uh, 84. So, so it's a big celebration. Yeah, two for one, sort of. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, so we are very happy to to have the possibility, of course. Uh, play the trio, but not only the trio, quartets and, and solo music, of course. That's fantastic. Piano music. <laughs> yeah, and so do you, do you um, I mean, it's definitely worth checking out their discography in general because it hits a lot of these um, major Czech composers um, and others like Beethoven. And, and so um, are there any uh, things that you have that you down the line that you really want to be doing or you're thinking about doing. I know you've done some performance. You, you do, of course, performances with orchestras too. Um, is that something that's a, a big part of what you do, or is it more just focused on the, the chamber music side? Well, it's uh, the, <clears throat> of course the the, the the concerts with orchestras um, are not so frequent like the recitals, but uh, <clears throat> we do some. We do an interesting piece uh, for trio and orchestra, which is by Voříšek, another Czech composer, not so known. I mean, he's not for his known for his symphony, uh, which is the, the, the biggest piece here, the most famous one. But it's a charming, about 15-minute piece, I think, and, uh, for trio and uh, orchestra, and it's not being performed very much, and it's lovely. Uh, also, uh, you know, Martinu. Uh, trios uh, are are maybe not his best works, but interesting works. You know, with, trios with, uh, with, with orchestra. Uh, yes, with, trios with, with orchestra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so they are the orchestra works, <clears throat> but uh, it's very difficult with recording today. I mean, you know, everything was recorded at least you know fifty hundred times. I mean, especially the Czech music by all Czech groups, uh, and uh, <clears throat> so it's very difficult to find something. New, uh, which has never been recorded. Um, we have the advantage I'm sorry, <laughs> that that I'm new to the trio, so basically we can record everything again. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, but we have also uh, other other projects like, uh, for example, very interesting composer, uh, Korngold. Uh, mm -hmm. He he was uh, also here in America, um, writing music for films, and so um, of course there is a this is big challenge for us because it's a great music it's a it's a very complicated also for piano so you you would be interested <laughs> 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 and uh, it's a it's these are two really great great big trios so maybe next time you know I, <laughs> it, it makes me think i wish we had known that we ha we have a very we have some uh, materials here at the library of congress from uh, of corn golds um, but maybe that next time um, you could Check them out and see what they were. But, oh yes. You know, I'm particularly interested in what you said about the Voroshek, um, because the, I, I just it, it made me think of uh, I have a fond memory of I'm just trying to pull this out of my memory, but um, Antonin Kubalek had a Czech miniature masterpieces CD from the early '90s that had some Voroshek solo piano pieces mm -hmm. um, that were just absolutely beautiful, and I. I I never did find much um, uh, recorded of, of, of a lot of his music, but maybe that's changed. I mean, this was, again, I'm thinking back, I don't know, that's 30 years now, so uh, too long ago, so I'll stop talking about that. Maybe, um, <laughs> maybe uh, at this point we could ask if, if anybody has any questions that we could, um, for the trio? We have a mic. We have a, yeah, we have a microphone. I'll just wait till it comes to you. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me through the mask okay? Maybe for 2024, it is the 150th anniversary of Yosef Suk's birth. And you have the Opus A trio and the Opus 23 elegy. I don't know how often they've been recorded, but that might be something to, to think about. And then a, a question I had was, if, where is a good place to get started with the Smetana piano music? What, where, uh, 
uh, as far as maybe playing something that isn't a virtuoso piece, uh, what would be a good thing to get started with as a player or a listener of Smetana piano music? Uh, Suk, uh, both of the, of, of the pieces you mentioned, uh, we recorded already, but not with Jan. So, so it, it could be <laughs> the plan <laughs> for future. And um, Smetana, there are many pieces, small pieces. You you can start uh, already with the four or five years uh, if if you like, but. Uh, of course, uh, if you if you would like to play it really good, then um, I would um, say ten ten years with the polkas and small uh, leaves. Um, this is uh, or, or sketches. This these are small pieces, really written for. Uh, Children or for 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 his friends, uh, uh, and um, and then then later, of course, uh, the the pieces like uh, dreams or Czech dances, uh, you you have to play really good uh, piano for that because it's uh, it's uh, very complicated already. No, thank you. That's good. Is there another no, no. question? Well, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with us about anything? I'm sure that you must be tired if you're feeling it's like 2 o'clock. <laughs> so maybe we'll let them off the hook and we can let them uh, go take a, uh, a little bit of a, a breather from us uh, before the performance. But um, if you could all please join me in thanking the Smetana Trio for... Thank you very much. Thank you.